An army of paedophile hunters is on the move against suspected predators. So how long have you been talking to young girls then? Have you been grooming what you believe to be a 15-year-old boy? What you've done is grooming. Many appear to support their methods. Dark Justice, fair play to the guys. Like, I think they're doing a great job. There is actually a lot of support out there for these people. But their internet videos can display a callous enjoyment of retribution. I love causing carnage. You're being watched by 2.8k people. You have press watching you right now. Now these hunter groups are here. See that look in your eyes right now? I take pleasure in that. Vigilante actions have led to fatal consequences. He was kicked to death because neighbours believed he was a paedophile. The police say he was an innocent man. Northern Ireland's history of armed conflict increases the potential danger. There is a reality that vigilante identification could lead to vigilante action and could lead to violence being meted out against a person. Pedophile hunters say they use lawful methods to combat a crime wave that many believe is beyond the reach of the police. Anyone who thinks the police in Belfast, Birmingham or Brighton have got the resources to deal with this tsunami of predators online is living in cloud cuckoo land. Last year, nearly half of grooming cases used evidence from hunter groups. The truth of it is you're wrong and you should just cut your own fucking windpipe. Though some hunters appear to care little for the justice system. I think they should get the death penalty. The only medication for these people is death. They're not a judge. They're not a jury. That's the law of the jungle. Two months ago, a County Antrim man appeared to become a victim of this law of the jungle. The father of two took his own life after a visit from a Northern Ireland paedophile hunter to his house, accusing him of being a sexual predator grooming a 14-year-old girl. Tonight's Spotlight has the first television interview with that self-styled hunter, and he tells us he's unrepentant, has no remorse, and will not be deterred from doing what he does. I didn't lose one bit of sleep over this individual, not at all. Okay, right, today we've got two people. First person we're going to is a guy by the name of Let's get a good look. Has been talking uh, to a 15-year-old boy, 15-year-old decoy. I'm with a self-styled paedophile hunter group in England who call themselves the Internet Interceptors. We've concealed their identities. Same thing as always, he wants penetrative sex with, with the child. Julie's briefed on the chat log. Um, she'll deal with that. I'll leave the security detail down to you. Um, so again, same thing every week. Last year, they were the first hunter group to come to Northern Ireland. We're in Northern Ireland. I've travelled from London to get you. I'm a paedophile hunter. Their leader, Julie, whose voice you've just heard, says they'll be back in Northern Ireland soon. But today, she briefs on another target. I have got five years old, medium build. That is a current picture of what he looks like. I'm in Birmingham, where most of the group are based, to see their methods in action. He's grooming what he believes to be a 13-year-old child. We've got three locations on him, so we'll be going to all three properties. Mm -hmm. Did you do okay, the recce? We've, we've done the recce on the three addresses, but no movement in on them. Okay. So we'll just knock on the all three today. He's a big risk, um, constantly says in the chat log to delete evidence, constantly wants indecent images. This morning when he spoke to myself, the decoy, he said that he was not coming and blocked the decoy, so cease contact. A key method Julie and other hunters use to obtain evidence against alleged paedophiles is to pose online as children, acting as decoys. How a decoy is set up is basically a fake email um, is made. We give the decoys a historical picture of a child. Whatever age that child was in that picture is what age the decoy is, and we sit and wait. We were on within seconds, we were approached. Jim Gamble, former head of Child Exploitation and Online Protection, CEOP, shows me how an online chat using a decoy can easily be set up. So this is an example of a decoy in action? 
Yes, this is a very simple decoy, text only, no images, and we've set it up as Maggie 13. And how long did it take for someone to respond? Seconds. I mean, usually at the right time of night, about 30 seconds, you'll, you'll have a response. And the thing to remember is this predator could be operating up to 30 uh, different usernames, engaging 30 different children simultaneously, just fishing uh, for the right vulnerable child. The danger signs of grooming emerge when the language turns sexual. How quickly does it deteriorate then into where sexual oh, well, hints come into this that, conversation? That simply won't take long. And um, what you you know, just chilling, want to have fun. So I've gone back, I've got a boyfriend. Uh, we will share nudes. That didn't you will take do long. sex with me. And that is absolutely par for the course. Hunters may use the tactics of the police with the briefings, decoys and stings, but critics say they are untrained, unregulated, unaccountable and dangerous. Paedophile groups do pose a risk to society until they are properly regulated and until they are, uh, understand that they are accountable and must operate under the law. They will continue to pose a risk for the proper administration of justice. The police say that by taking the law into their own hands, hunters create an additional workload on overburdened detectives. All vigilante type activity not only blurs the line uh, and moves people into carrying out law enforcement activity for which they're not trained or, or able to do it in an accountable manner, but it can distract some of our activity to investigating what the paedophile hunters and vigilantes bring forward. The complaints were made by boys, by their parents, even by individual policemen. I've spent decades investigating paedophilia at places like Concora and exposing people like paedophile priest Father Brendan Smith. Nowadays, paedophiles hunt and hide in cyberspace, so smartphones become a detection tool for parents and concerned citizens to go undercover online to draw the predator into the open. The motivation of many of these paedophile hunters is to bring these guys out into the real world. That's achieved when the online groomers get a child to meet in the real world for sex. When the predator turns up for that encounter, the hunters are waiting. Have you ever done this before? Did you just come out of the net? Yeah. Yeah, I've done it like twice, three times. Such things were first popularised with TV programmes in the United States. In 2003, it was a method used by Spotlight in the film Online Danger. Hello, Jonathan. My name's Mandy McCauley. I'm from the Spotlight programme, BBC. You came here with the intention of having sex with a 14-year-old child. What prompted the growth in paedophile hunters is the explosion in sexual predators accessing children online. The Internet Watch Foundation last year took down 57,000 sites dedicated to child pornography. So they're only getting a fragment of what we believe is out there. This reflects a case between 2004 and 2006. That began... Jim Gamble shows how one image of a child being sexually abused was downloaded and tracked across the world. You only have to watch the spread of this image to see how those people involved feed like it's a virus. It just spreads from person to person, from paedophile to paedophile across the globe. And the police now admit the problem is too big for them. I don't think any law enforcement agency has the capacity to control the entire internet. I don't think that's frankly possible for anyone to do. My biggest concern about this rapidly emerging online risk to children is that 15, 20 years from now, we're going to be looking back at an epidemic of abuse because of complacency today. No questions. No. All right, so no, let's go. Let's do it. Let's go and do it. We are back in Birmingham with internet interceptors. We're now following internet interceptors on their way to confront someone. It's not the person they originally intended to confront, because believe it or not, another group of paedophile hunters have confronted that person while we were waiting with them to, to go off. We're not going to go the whole way, so we'll stop off very shortly. And we maybe watch the whole thing as they stream it on the internet. 
The other hunter group that hijacks the Interceptor's first sting is Silent Justice. This is the man they confronted in Birmingham. We're not showing his face, as he hasn't been found guilty of any crime. I'll travel from here to the end of the earth if I have to. The voice of the Silent Justice leader in Belfast. He's the one who knocked on the front door of the County Antrim man who took his own life. He's accused him of wanting to have sex with a child. I will come down on a sexual predator like there's no tomorrow. We track him down, and eventually he agrees to talk. James, not his real name, says he's undeterred about the suicide in August of the County Antrim man he confronted. When I'd find out about this individual taking his own life, how did I feel? As arrogant as it sounds, I didn't lose one bit of sleep over this individual. Not at all. The first thing that came to my mind was the detrimental effect to um, his young daughter, his son, his wife. But you have no remorse? No, not at all. That might astound people looking at this. Uh, you've got absolutely no, no feeling of regret at all that a man has taken his own life. Pierce and I should have evaluated this man before releasing him on bail. Uh, should now, you have evaluated him before you called? Oh, I knew this man's mental condition. I knew this man's uh, attraction to children. That was, that was where I came in. It's devast- because you came in that way that, that, that he of course. T- took his life. You accept that? Uh, well, y- yes, I do. Um, I, I don't accept that I'm the cause that took his life. He lived by a sword and he got struck down by it. What underlines James's total lack of remorse is the fact that just five days after the man had taken his own life, James was back on the streets again, knocking another family's door to confront someone else. We are from uh, Silent Justice. We're an online uh, child protection unit. At half past 12 at night, he knocks on the front door of another suspect. For now, what I'm doing is I'm going to place him under citizen's arrest, uh, section 24A. The man's elderly mother becomes hugely distressed and calls to other members of her family for help. We're not here to cause harm to you. One of the family members said to you, you, you can't bring the attention and the focus of blame onto other members of the family, which they feel you did by calling at their house after midnight and attracting attention. Do you understand his position? Um, to a point, we're there because of his family member bringing us there. Was it necessary to go at half past 12 at night in darkness and frighten the elderly parents? OK, well, if I put it to you that four minutes prior to us showing at the address that this man was attempting to masturbate, live on the phone, to the young decoy. If I find you, then that's it. It's as simple as this, you're getting arrested. You want to place him under citizen's arrest? By using the law to make a citizen's arrest, James and others like him may well risk breaking the law themselves on privacy and human rights. Their very appearance and their intention to arrest a household member has clearly caused that lady distress and she wants them to leave. It's distressing for a totally innocent person an elderly lady in whose household a suspect resides. And why should she be subjected to that type of behaviour? Who knows what the consequences of that were for her? James says his actions are justified by the explicit nature of the messages sent by the suspect. He meets with us again to show us examples of the chat log, the dialogue between his decoys and online predators. In the chat log, put your penis in her mouth and into her vagina. Um, and also um, her uh, sodomizer. I've heard a recording of an exchange between the man you confronted and the decoy. And, and he's very, he's as graphic in his conversation as he is in these messages. That's right, yeah. He knows perfectly well he's arranging Mm-hmm. to have sex with an underage girl and, in fact, refers to a school uniform, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, exactly. His, his, his sexual preference uh, um, and well, it's coaxing to get this young girl um, to come to the meet wearing her school uniform. The lurid language predators use in grooming a child for sex is also a key factor motivating Julie. While I'm kissing you, I would slip my hands into your pants and slide two fingers into your tight pussy. Back with internet interceptors in England, I'm watching